Down one, facing elimination with three seconds left. The Celtics' last play of the game sees Coach Missoula drop an STS action, where Brown sets a back screen for Smart, who sets a flare for Brown directly after. And with the Heat defense anticipating post entry to Jalen off that last pick, that gets the attention off Smart, allowing him to spring up to get free on the left wing for the entry. Derek White's meant to either roll or pop depending on what the defense gives him following his inbound pass, leaving him open under the rim after Smart's three comes up short. And Derek's buzzer beating putback with 0.3 seconds left caps off one of the most dramatic back and forth battles you'll ever see. The script has officially been flipped in the Celtics' favor, as Boston has now become the fourth team in the NBA's 76 year history to force a Game 7 after trailing 3-0 in a series, joining the 1951 Rochester Royals, the 1994 Denver Nuggets, and the 2003 Portland Trailblazers. Can they make history by becoming the first team ever to complete an 0-3 series comeback? Or are they showing signs of the natural complacency that failed 150 teams before them? Stay tuned. Just 12.7% of you watching are subscribed though, so please subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, as always. As the kids would say, D. White is him, that guy, and the GOAT. Derek, if you're watching this, you are that guy. Huh? Relentlessly pushing towards championship number 18, the inspiring seas are destined and mean to come out on top in this supreme Eastern Conference battle. It's tough to come up clutch like the Heat did with Butler knocking down three free throws the possession prior, but still come up short in such devastating fashion. This series went from a seeming to be gentleman sweep at most in Miami's favor, if not a sweep for Miami, but after that first Boston win, it just felt like the momentum shifted and the Celtics really got their chemistry back. Now Tatum, Brown, Smart, Horford, and company have made this anyone series as Game 7 is going to be absolute fire. The Heat haven't even played that poorly, as of course they were within just one point this past game, but it's just had the feeling of being a series where they've played really well for the most part. This was the 8th seed in the East at the end of the day, they were only expected to do so much. They've come a long way, and maybe beating Milwaukee in an all-time upset in round 1, then taking down New York in 6 before going up 3-0 on the Celtics, took a lot out of them both spiritually and physically. Even if Miami were to become the first team ever to blow a 3-0 series lead, that wouldn't be cause for any shame. Of course it would be embarrassing on the surface for fans in Dade County, however, the Celtics have just come storming back in this best of seven thriller, as they've just been the hungrier, more talented, egoless team 1-15. through 15. Therefore, it's absolutely unsurprising, at least after game 4 in my unbiased opinion when Boston stormed back, that this was going to be a series that went the distance. But as Jalen Brown says, the energy shifted and the personality of this entire series and narrative has completely turned on its head. Al Horford's impact was felt in this one, I thought. He only had four points, but defensively it felt like he was really pressuring Miami's perimeter guys to put it on the deck with his quick for his size lateral movement. Horford's energy level and even his dad Tito's have been a notably important factor to the mentorship of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. The Godfather racked up a game-saving block of the year contender on Adebayo. Tatum and Brown combined for 57 in this one, as this is debatably the best duo in the NBA right now, although I'd go with Jokic and Murray, who await them in the finals. Steph and Draymond at their best are also in that discussion. Anyways, the hero was again D. White, but not in the way he typically is by strictly knocking down triples and scoring 20-ish points. Don't get me wrong, he scored 11 impactful points, and his three triples were timely, but it's all the little things that Derek did that stood out, like tapping away a deflection, swatting a shot, or like he did when it mattered the ultimate most, putting back an O-Bore. White has sneaky elite hops, as he can spring in from out of nowhere with that bounciness, in addition to his hustle, for plays like the one we saw to win it. The Celtics didn't even get much from their bench in this one, which is the scary part for the opposing Heat, because role players like Grant and Rob are going to play much better at the Garden, or should I say, the Garden. Miami's toughness versus Boston's attention to detail has become the story of this series. B. 
being a basketball player breeds a level of intellect and internal dialogue that goes beyond the surface level value that we all try to depict as it is. Basketball is the most intimate sport of them all in terms of the blend of calmness, coolness, and intensity it takes to succeed, whether you're competing at the highest level or just trying to drain buckets in an open gym. From top to bottom and from start to finish, aside from when they gave up the lead and resembled suffering a choke job, the Boston Celtics displayed that very level of focus and clarity that it takes to get it done in the sport that we all love. Going through the motions quite simply won't get it done, and the Celtics may have gotten away with that early in the fourth of Game 7, other than when they needed it most. But going forward, whether it's Monday's matchup after a flight back to Boston, or potentially a series with the Denver Nuggets after flying up to the mile high if they win that one, Boston will not be able to get away scot-free if they do that again. We've looked at this from a standpoint from both the fans and players, but from a coach's perspective, Relating to that aforementioned must-have mindset means everything and doesn't entail simply calling out the obvious by saying stuff like, we're not playing hard enough. Yes, reminders of the little things are as crucial as anything and they shouldn't be forgotten by any stretch, but the success of a man in charge comes down to a specific ability to dig down deep and relate to your team in that indescribable way. Winning will only happen for you as a head coach in the association if you're both fully in the moment and not just on the same page, but the same wavelength as your players. Rookie head coach Joe Mazzula, at least up to this point, has checked every box as a man in charge. He's fueled his guys to be an evidently resilient group, one that's passionate and one that's egoless. As mentioned in the past, he allows his assistant coaches to do a lot of his dirty work, yet hasn't left them to too much responsibility, staying sharp as the primary director by committing to drawing up every single play. By the looks of it, his play calls are solid, but even the slightest bit of overconfidence, that's where Missoula could lose his cool and one way or the other, stagnate his offense. The pressure will be on in Game 7, not just for the Heat, who were looking to avoid history, but for Coach Missoula, with all the scrutiny he faces in such a grueling Boston market, with Udoka having led this team to a finals appearance last year, more than anything in the high paying job that it is, Joe responding to the challenges, critiques, and even the most backhanded of backlash will be critical towards his success in this upcoming Game 7. We'll see if he lives up to the hype. But we'll also get to see how Jason, Jalen, and Marcus back up their coach, who will of course need a pressure relief as any rookie head coach would need in such a scenario. Whose experience will pay off, Tatum and Browns, or Butler and Adebayo's, that will tell the tale of Monday night's Game 7. But with how Jimmy answered his post-game interview guaranteeing a Heat win in Game 7, and with how Tatum and Brown seemed flabbergasted with their W, I'm starting to sense some Celtic complacency arise. More scary is that Heat coach Eric Spolstra stated post-game that he's ready to skip the 48-hour break and tip it off right now. The Celtics have to match that level of intensity and stay ready for battle during this break, leading up until a must-see Game 7 at the Garden.